So now what we're going to do is we're going to determine the firm's pricing policy to maximize total profit with price discrimination still and with this external constraint, this production capacity of 500. How many items should be allocated for each market as well? Okay, so this is what we're talking about as a constraint. So I'm gonna introduce a new notation. We have a constraint and I give it this symbol. It's a function of Q1 and Q2. And what it is, is that Q1 plus Q2 have to be less than or equal to 500. This is our constraint. Q1 plus Q2 must be less than or equal to 500. So how we're going to address this is we're going to assume that we actually make them equal to it, that we hit 500. And we're going to rearrange this equation. Q1 is going to be then equal to 500 minus Q2. If we are limited by this budget, if it does constrain us, then Q1 will be equal to 500 minus Q2. So now I'm gonna take my profit function from the previous example, and I'm gonna copy it over. Here's my profit function. And what I'm gonna be doing here, wherever I see Q1, I'm gonna replace it by 500 minus Q2. And this way, I'm going to be embedding the constraint into my profit equation. So this is 670 times every time I have Q1, it's going to have this constraint. Now, I don't do it with Q2 as well, because then I'm going to um, kind of having a loop going on and they don't actually end up solving for anything. Basically, it's saying whenever I solve for Q1, that it's going to be limited to being 500 minus Q2. And using this substitution, I can now solve for what the optimal Q2 would be. But before doing that, I'm just gonna make this equation a little bit easier to read by foiling this out. I'm gonna simplify this equation. So 670 times 500 gives me 335,000 minus 670 Q2 minus, I'm gonna leave this as 500 minus Q2 all squared plus 780 Q2 minus 2Q2 squared minus 6,000. Now I'm gonna collect my like terms. So I have 335,000 and the constant 6,000. So subtracting 6,000, I get 329,000. I have negative 670 Q2 and 780 Q2, leaving me with 110 Q2 minus 2 Q2 squared. And then the last term, 500 minus Q2 all squared. So now I have a profit function that is a function of one variable. It's a one variable function. To optimize this, I'm going to use one variable optimization. So the stuff before the midterm, lecture four. Step one for doing one variable optimization is going to be to get the first derivative. So the derivative with respect to Q2, I have my first term here, 329,000, the derivative is zero. I have the second term, 110 Q2, the derivative of that will be 110. I have my third term, minus 2Q2 squared. So the derivative of that will be minus 4Q2. And then I have this last term. So I'm gonna to have to use the chain rule. So this is going to be minus two times 500 minus Q2 all to the power of one times the derivative of Q2 on the inside is going to be minus one. So I have a minus and a minus, so this really becomes a positive. So this gives me 110 minus 4Q2 plus 1000 minus 2Q2. Combining my like terms, I have 110 and 1000 
giving me 1,110. And I have minus 4Q2 and minus 2Q2 giving me minus 6Q2. So that's my first derivative. So the next step for my one variable optimization is to set this to be equal to zero and solve for my Q2 value. So I'm moving my 6Q2 over to the other side. I have 6Q2 is equal to 1,110. Dividing both sides by six, I get Q2 is equal to 185. So now I have a Q2 value. I can solve for the Q1 value as well. Remember that I have this relationship here. Q1 is equal to 500 minus Q2. So this is gonna be 500 minus Q2. So it's gonna be 500 minus 185. Q1 is going to be 315. So let's compare that to our befores. Before we had Q1 equal to 335 and Q2 was equal to 195. So we can see that both of these values, Q1 and Q2, have dropped slightly so that we will be within our limit of 500. Unconstrained optimization, we had Q2 would be 195, but because it's constrained, it had to be lowered to meet our production limit. Uh, and so it was lowered by 10 for Q2 and 20 for Q1. Okay, so now our production capacity would be 500. And that, that's pretty much it for example one. If we want to complete this process, we could go further and we can do the proof of optimization. We would take the second derivative, et cetera. But I'm, I'm not going to go that far because we've already shown that these, this is a maximum when we were looking at the previous part A 